What's up, everybody? This is Joseph R. Wheeler III, the artist founder and the president of the Honest Kind Foundation. And I wanted to talk to y'all about travel, one of my favorite things, and a major part of what we do here on Honest Kind on our YouTube and even on our Instagram. We have what we call Honest Kind Outdoors Worldwide. And the purpose of that show is especially outdoor environments, but not always outdoors, but we stress outdoors. And it's really about travel. I mean, you have to go outside to travel, right? You have to be in a plane that's in the air, up in the sky, or you gotta be on a boat, or you gotta be in a vehicle outside in, in the environments. You know, it's it's not always cooped up inside of a residence. That's, that's really the psychology we mean when we say outdoors as a whole. But then we take it even deeper because I love the great outdoors. And I'm talking about hiking and fishing, particularly are passions, absolute passions of mine. So in that, you can look and see through our content that we've done a lot so far. And we have only started, only started. I've been so far to Malaysia. Shout out Malaysia. Definitely want to shout out Malaysia. Always respect to Malaysia because it was my first passport stamp. You know what I'm saying? The very first passport stamp, which is a big deal to me. Um, what would have been the first passport stamp ended up being the second one. I had planned to go to Mexico when the whole pandemic jumped off. And I was like, well, whatever, can't do that. So, you know, life was life. And then I messed around and found this opportunity, uh, met somebody cool out in Malaysia, decided to go visit them and said, I'm gonna make this an opportunity for content too. So it was a work play opportunity and it turned out to be some of the greatest content I have to date. Around, and we also went to Mexico, the Yucatan, Visited Cancun briefly, but stayed especially in Playa del Carmen. Went to uh, Isla Mujeres, went to Cozumel. Missed Tulum, but I always say I gotta go back because I gotta see Tulum. But enjoyed it. Bottom line, enjoyed it. And you know, Viva Viva la Mexico, Viva Mexico. Definitely gotta go back to Mexico. I see why so many people love Mexico and America, and especially if you're on the East Coast, why people take that flight all the time, because it's so short. It's so short, I mean, you literally, you're, you're up in the air and you're down in no more than two hours. You can't beat that. You can't beat that. Uh, versus going to the other side of the globe. It's just a lot involved when you travel like that. And it takes a lot out of you. And I've learned I'm going to keep doing it because I love it. I definitely have a passion for seeing the rest of Southeast, Southeast Asia, other parts of Asia, um, and even the African continent. I could not stress enough how it made me feel to be in the air and you know how you're checking the uh, the flight status and you see the map of the world and you see the little plane, you know where you're at and you say, I'm literally over Africa right now. I'm over the motherland. This is what I've always talked about, always desired, always wanted to see. Uh, and I have yet to go to the motherland. So that's an absolute must. And I'm gonna say proudly that whether it's this next year or the year after, Somewhere in there, we're going to Africa. I'm going to say 2024 because I've already gotten places that I've been researching that I want to go and that I want to share with y'all for content. Uh, off the top of my head for my list, South Africa stands out. I always did. I always said when I thought of going to Africa for the first time, I said, which of the second largest continent in the world, 54 countries, where do you want to be, man? Where, you know, naturally you want to go somewhere where you know you have roots. I've done a little bit of my gene roots. I've done the, you know, the swab test in the mouth with the Q-tip and everything. Uh, shout out to AfricanAncestry.com. Same company that the late, great King T'Challa himself, Brother Chadwick Boseman, and other members of the cast of Black Panther, they used that company to get their roots before they did the film so that they could feel more tied in with who they were and how it could relate to those characters. But, um, you know, and as an actor myself, writer, producer, and just somebody who loves my history and that core element of my history, because I'm mixed, like all of most, all humanity is mixed in one way or another, but I know my mix. I know I have African for show now, because I did that. And I found out that, I'm gonna reveal something here that I haven't ever revealed blatantly. I've, I've said it here and there, bits and pieces, but I'm just gonna straight up say, I know for a fact that on my father's 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 side, I am Balanta. Balanta are the peoples of modern day uh, Guinea-Bissau. They are the most dominant group in Guinea-Bissau, but they're also in southern um, Senegal. So, and I've always wanted to go to Senegal, ironically. I love a lot of things about Senegal. I got a couple of Senegalese friends here in the Atlanta area, and they're some of the most wonderful, spirited people. Love their energy. And so, you know, wow, wow. Wow, wow. Senegal.
other groups of note on my mother's side, I have Fulani. I also have Tikar. And I have a group of peoples off of Equatorial Guinea, which was colonized by the Spanish. These are the Bubi people, B-U-B-I, off the coast. They have an island, another Tikar right here. And then these are more people of Balanta. So yeah, I got a lot of places to go and a lot of people to see. But yeah, I gotta go, I gotta go, y'all. So I always think, you know, if I do that trip, I would go to Senegal and to Guinea-Bissau because I gotta go to Guinea-Bissau. I just have to, right? Um, to fish off the coast of Guinea-Bissau would mean the most to me, even more so than going deep inland. Uh, I do want to see, you know, inland areas, but I'll be honest, when I've done my research on Guinea-Bissau, there's a lot to contend with when it comes to poverty and infrastructure issues and all that kind of unfortunate stuff. Because the Belanta people, along with many other groups, were it's, it's similar to the history of Haiti, of Haiti. You know, whenever black folks fought back against oppression and colonization, once the banking systems and the oppressive systems took over and set up their infrastructure, they left you high and dry. Like, yeah, you won the fight, so to speak. We never broke you, but we're going to keep you broke in our world where everything's on our money and all that BS. So whole nother political conversation that I don't want to get into. But if you know the history a little bit, you know what I'm saying. And none of this is offensive. It's just facts because I love where all, all of what I am. I just know the, the reality of what people were left. And as a result, from a traveling standpoint, being that I'm just starting, I don't want to rough it. Not to mention, the older I get, I really don't want to rough it at all. Not hardcore. I will I will do it for less and less amenity situations to go fishing, for example, or to, you know, camp out for a couple of days, maybe. <laughs> maybe a cabin, a little small cabin. But I can't stand the thought of you know, being uncomfortable because I've, you know, I'm, I'm getting older and I've had a few medical alerts, you know, things to let you know, hey, don't play. You don't want to be stuck out somewhere and ain't got access to a good hospital or proper medical care or people who are going to understand your situation or give a damn to help you out or whatever, you know what I'm saying? So that's not to say, you know, if I went to Guinea Bissau or, or you know, remote area of Brazil or anywhere that I want to go uh, to do these things, you know, the fishing, the hiking, the everything that I couldn't find anything, but just, you know, you weigh the risk. Anywhere you go, you're gonna weigh the risk and you'll say to yourself, wait a minute, what's the chances of life emergency in this place versus this place? And when it comes down to it, hey, if I add up that your place is just way more risk, it's going lower on my list. So that would be a reason why, for example, you know, with Guinea-Bissau, as much as I wanna do that trip, I'm gonna need more preparation to make that happen. And I don't want it to just be Guinea-Bissau. I want it to be Guinea-Bissau, Senegal, and about probably four other countries in West Africa because they're so close together and I want to see so much of West Africa. I haven't been to Nigeria. I mean, I haven't been any part of Africa, but I definitely, I know too many Nigerians not to go to Nigeria. It's just, it's mandatory. <laughs> I got to go to Nigeria. Um, yeah, got to do that. Um, you know, but you want to be prepared and you want to be, you want to have your friends and connections set up so when you get there, you're not a stranger in a strange place. You already got, you are strange in a strange place, but you got friends around you. You got people surrounding you. You're gonna get you in, get you out safe. You ain't gotta worry about nothing. That's that's the way I wanna roll. That's the way I wanna generally roll anywhere. But there are places in the world where you can go where tourism is such an important factor to the survival of the economy that, you know, you still know you're a foreigner in a foreign place, but you are you have some amenities just by being an American citizen and being a traveler. When you're in the Yucatan, it's one of the safest places in Mexico. It's as dangerous as other parts of Mexico can be, and even there can be. Any, anywhere, you can get got anywhere. I'm sitting here right now in Metro ATL, and ATL got a lot of issues. I feel less safe here than I did in Mexico, quite frankly, in most places I was at. Now, there was places I went that I started feeling that feeling of, oh, now let me keep my guard up, signals up. But that, I could literally count that on one hand, barely one hand, and they were incidents, not everywhere I was, you know? So it all comes down to, you know, for me, safety, infrastructure, accessibility, all those things when I'm picking a place I wanna travel. And yes, the people, the food, the culture, the arts in general, what about it I'm looking for, what I wanna see most, what I've always wanted to see, something, something that's been on my bucket list, you know, the fish I wanna catch, all right? 
the women I want to see. I mean, you know what I mean? I'm a, hey, I'm a single man, and I enjoy my life as much as I can, you know? And when I travel especially, I'm looking for uh, the dream and, and, quite frankly, the fantasy that a lot of men who have gotten fed up with most of their options in America, and I'm not totally fed up. I mean, I still meet ladies here every now and then, but things have definitely changed, and the value system of what I consider valuable is more prevalent amongst foreign women. So even when I'm dating ladies here, I'm looking for ladies from other cultures who just happen to live here. You know, their family came here whenever, and those have been the best people in my life so far. But when you look at predictability, probability, and you say, man, every time I'm happy, it's with somebody who grew up in a culture that, you know, may, may have been somewhat American, but it's from somewhere else because they're from other places. Their people are from other places. That's what works for me. So I'd rather go to those places, you know. Latino ladies, Asian ladies, and even when it comes to quote unquote black, from the Caribbean, okay? Gotta go to the more of the Caribbean, definitely. Uh, and even parts of Africa, okay? So yeah, like I've met cuties online from South America, from, oh my gosh, so many countries talk to them for a while and I admit people can be flaky anyway I always say I always say hey they say the grass is greener grass can be greener but grass is grass people still be doing people stuff you know what I'm saying uh, back to South Africa definitely want to go some places in South Africa particularly somewhere on a beach so I've been looking at a lot of stuff. of course Cape Town pops into mind first but I've also looked at a few other cities that are known for being on the water and all that kind of good stuff. Another country that actually is close by that I thought, you know, maybe do South Africa and do Namibia. I almost wanted to go to Namibia one year and I, I admit it was inspired by I met a lady online. She ended up flaky. You know, so like I say, it don't matter. International be flaky too sometimes. But what I got from that is I started doing research about her country and it intrigued me. It made me think, wow, you know, uh, you were the inspiration, but the country itself has a lot more than I thought it did. At first, I thought it was a you know, pretty bland place to go. I wasn't too impressed. And then I started doing my research, and I realized, oh, okay, there's a way about this place. Like Once you know how Namibia is, Namibia is pretty amazing, actually. It's got a lot of interesting facts about it. It's got a desert, a beach, and you know, a nice little town vibe to it. Tune in, like, and subscribe our content here on YouTube. Especially check out our Busting Pixels show. It's gaming season right now. That's what we consider it for our network because this is when we get the most time to play for y'all. So guess what? We've been doing a lot of content back to back to back to back and you need to peep it for Cyberpunk 2077, for Mortal Kombat 1, and for Tekken 7. And we can't wait for Tekken 8. And we're going to get there and we're going to get all those new games. Like we need to play the new Spider-Man. We need to play Play. so much stuff we need to play but you know how we're gonna do it because of y'all yep because y'all gonna subscribe y'all gonna help us get monetized so we can do what we got to do to keep doing what y'all enjoy watching because we see the numbers going up and we appreciate you stay tuned all right all right